Hello everybody and welcome back to Red Eagle Politics. Make sure you like this video down below and subscribe to the channel if you are new. So Elon Musk did it. He went and he bought Twitter this morning and it's awesome. He already bought the company. We saw him sort of join the board or was about to join the board recently and then he actually decided not to do it because then he could buy more shares and then he just bought the whole company. It is awesome. Elon, we love you, buddy. Uh, hopefully, we're going to get some free speech back on Twitter. It has a lot of potential to be a very great platform, but the arbitrary bans and everything we've seen over the past five years have really diminished the new public square. And a lot of people, including myself, have been really reluctant to even use Twitter because of their practices. But Elon Musk bought Twitter and he has said that he is going to uphold free speech in the process, which is awesome. Now, I don't know when people are going to start to come back. Uh, we're going to talk about if Trump comes back at all later in this video. But either way, I'm sure there's going to be a new terms of service and you are going to see people that may have been banned get to come back even if it is on a new account and they will be able to stay on. And we love to see it. So we're going to get into this. The left is melting down. Absolutely. We're going to get into Elon's statement as well first. But I have to tell you guys about our sponsors, our newest sponsors over at C60 Evo. Nothing is more important than our health. And as we struggle with health system changes and an overload of questionable information, we need to make sure we're taking care of ourselves. Because of this, I recommend C60 Evo. Now, I can tell you that C60 Evo is a part of my daily routine. I love the increased energy, the increased mental focus, and best of all, just like thousands of other customers, I've noticed positive changes in my sleep. I now wake up refreshed and confident to start the day with one morning teaspoon per day of C60 Evo's olive oil product. You can go to my link in the pinned comment below, c60evo.com slash politics and take advantage of a 20% savings by going on subscription, which you can cancel at any time, and make sure to use my promo code, REPOL, for an additional 10% off. So Elon bought Twitter for $44 billion, uh, a little bit of a dent there in his fortune, but it's great when you have powerful people that are willing to make sacrifices in order to protect the masses. We love to see it. A lot of our elite don't do this, and Elon does. And it's funny that it took a big tech uh, electric car manufacturing coastal billionaire to come to the rescue and save the day. Like that's the last person you would expect. But either way, Elon Musk, he's, he's pretty cool, I guess. He's kind of an interesting fellow, kind of a, a very eccentric guy. He is somebody who uh, is probably more on the libertarian right side of things. But either way, he's in power. He's an ally. I mean, there are some skepticism to be had with some of the things that he does, like the brain chips or whatever. And I'm not really the biggest fan of the electric cars myself. But either way, I think Elon has good intentions here. I think he is a good guy. And there is no way where this is not a net positive in any capacity. Is it going to be perfect? Well, maybe not guaranteed. But as we know, this is a massive step in the right direction for free speech on big tech. And we do love to see it. Uh, and also, in terms of like the electric car thing with Elon, he did go out of his way to say that we need to be drilling more here as somebody who was like a CEO of an electric car company. And that's something you like to see because it's not always about the money for him. And this proves that it's not always about the money. And we do love to see it. And this is his statement that he put out today right here. He said, free speech is the bedrock of a functioning democracy and Twitter is the digital town square. So true where matters vital to the future of humanity are debated. Exactly. You have these big tech oligarchs. They're deciding what is misinformation and what is not misinformation. They're saying this is hateful. This is offensive. Therefore, we have to ban it. And it's like the First Amendment does not stop at popular speech. It's actually the opposite. It's there for controversial speech. That's why it exists to begin with. And then Musk goes on to say, I want to make Twitter better than ever by enhancing the product with new features, making the algorithms open source to increase trust, defeating the spam bots, and authenticating all humans. It has tremendous potential. I look forward to working with the company and the community of users to unlock it. And I thought it was a great statement. I do. Because free speech is important. The so-called system of democracy that we currently have has just allowed a select few oligarchs to go out there and manipulate the public square for their benefit to control the masses. That's really what we have. We have a tyrannical system, especially on the internet. And Elon Musk is somebody who sees a lot of potential in the internet, thinks it could be used for good, and wants to use his power to go out and unlock it so we can bring people like Donald Trump and Alex Jones and many other great people back on Twitter. 
and this is true. And I think it's a very positive development. I think a domino effect could easily be in store. As I said, give it some time. And if Twitter becomes a free platform again with free speech, YouTube and others may end up following suit. The energy has shifted and we are reclaiming the institutions. And yes, I know it, you know, it might take another big billionaire to go out of his way and buy YouTube, but you never know what's going to happen. Domino effects happen all the time. Cultural changes happen all the time. And if you're able to go out there and change the culture in the new public square and m make it a fair, free and fair platform again, just like it was in 2016 and before, and you're able to change the Overton window, who knows? You'll see more platforms decide to do the same and follow suit because they're not going to care because the pressure from the opposition will mean less. And this is true. And also, the opposition was seething. And you know when they seethe like this, they know that they lost, and it's a good day for us. And Nazis was trending on Twitter today under technology. That's the category they put it. So apparently letting people speak freely on the, in the new public square is equivalent to Nazism, according to these people. Okay, whatever. I mean, it's hilarious. You look at just everything, and it, it, it's just so real. And like Paul Joseph Watson said, if you don't like Elon Musk buying Twitter, just build your own. Build your own Twitter. You know, it's it's funny. Now now we just get to laugh at this because they've been saying this for the longest time, saying that, oh, private companies can do whatever they want. Oh, no, you're not going to censor people that I don't like. Oh, no. Like, it's, it's hilarious. The meltdown is real. And Twitter is a private company now, by the way. This isn't just a meme. Elon Musk is taking Twitter private. So there's not going to be, I believe, as many shareholders as there currently are right now. And that's the way that things are going to be in Twitter. So we have to get to the meltdown now because this is hilarious. Um, right here we have Sean King, who I forgot existed, and I'm sure many other people forgot he existed. Uh, Sean King says, at its root, Elon Musk wanting to purchase Twitter is not about left versus right. It's about white power because the man was raised in South Africa by a white nationalist. He's attacking Elon Musk based off of his African ancestry, which, by the way, unlike you, Sean, Elon Musk actually has. You know, Sean King is this guy, for those of you who might be too young to remember, he would go out there and he would, like, say that he's black and he put on these glasses and he'd, like, shave his head. And he was this very big BLM guy. I think even, like, BLM hates him now because he just siphoned a lot of their money away and wasted it. It's hilarious. But then he's like, Twitter won't allow a certain uh, white nationalists, which they'll call everybody white nationalists, to target and harass people. That's his definition of free speech. Uh, yeah, that, that is free speech, whether you like it or not. Free speech it includes controversial speech. If you don't like somebody, you can just block them and move on. That's how these things work. But these people are just entitled little babies because they've been coddled by this system for so long. And it's absolutely hilarious to see them melt down. Also, we have four foot eleven Robert Reich. He makes Vince Dow look like Yao Ming in comparison. He goes on to say, Trump is suing Facebook, Twitter, and Google. This was an old tweet. Uh, for violating his First Amendment rights by keeping him off their platform. Somebody should remind him that they're private companies to which the First Amendment doesn't apply. What did he have to say today? Oh, here we go. He said, Musk and his apologists say if consumers don't like what he does with Twitter, they can go elsewhere. But where else would consumers go to post short messages that can reach millions of people other than Twitter? The free market increasingly reflects the demands of big money. I mean, that's also ironic because Elon Musk is like one of the only billionaires that is solid on this issue. <laughs> but that's beside the point. Either way, it's hilarious. The same people, and we knew this would happen, the same people that would say, it's a private company. You, They could do what they want are now going to say, hey, no, it's, it has too much power. They're not going to censor people that I disagree with. No, we're losing our grip on power. No, that can't happen. Yeah, well, welcome to the club, buddy. Welcome to the club. But uh, the list just goes on. Uh, here we have this tweet. This individual says, Elon Musk is a racist, transphobe, predatory, union-busting, anti-democratic robber baron who's mad people say bad things about him. I don't want to give him anything more than I already have by being a citizen in this country where he and Tesla don't pay enough taxes. 12 years of my life are recorded here, so I'm not actually going to delete, which is another thing a lot of these people have been saying they're going to delete. I don't really think they will, just like all of the celebrities never moved to Canada after Trump won. And just like a lot of people on the right who said they would boycott Twitter, including myself, really couldn't do so because it just is such a large platform. But uh, they say, I, I am, however, going to dark later today. I'll miss interacting on here enormously. And if Musk's ambitions are somehow blunted or I just miss it too much, I may be back. But for now, she's going away. 
So I, I don't think I really don't think much is going to be lost. <laughs> but uh, it's it's hilarious. So here we go. We have this guy who's in the Twitter uh, room right now. It's a little blurry, but he says it's absolutely insane at Twitter right now in the virtual valves of private Slack rooms and employee group texts, according to a source. Uh, somebody says they're going to throw up because they don't want to work for a company that's owned by Elon Musk. And they don't know what they're supposed to do. They have a meeting at five and the CEO is like going to basically just like deal with a bunch of crybabies. I'm sure he'll be one of them internally. It's just like, bro, you people are grown men. <laughs> like, seriously. And then he says, I hate him. Why does he even want this? They asked. I don't know. Maybe so you could stop arbitrarily banning people and politically targeting your enemies? I don't know. I really don't know why he would want that. Interesting. It's It, it really is something that needs to be questioned. But uh, the list goes on. The guy says, the employee continued, I feel like he's this petulant little boy and that he's doing this to troll. He doesn't know anything about our policies and what we do. His statement about our algo was effing insane. We're just going to let everyone run amok. Nobody knows. Well, yeah, that's how these things are supposed to work, genius. That's how they're supposed to work. And Elon Musk is making it an actual platform for everybody. He's not necessarily making it a publisher to uh, promote certain information that benefits the establishment, that benefits the globalist American empire. Like I said, I don't know if Elon is 100% on our side, but I'm not going to turn this down because this is clearly a move in the right direction, and he is extremely based for this, I will say. So... He goes on to say, a part of what I do is monitoring toxicity and health in the trends. Yeah, that's probably the same guy who's like boosting the Nazis trend under the technology category. <laughs> I don't know if this will impact my job directly. I still want to have a job and I don't know how this impacts that, which also is an interesting statement because if you take control of the institutions, these people are going to have to fall in line. And this is how it works. It's honestly easier done than said if you have the right people making the right moves. And that's exactly what Elon did today. And then he goes on to say, they added there, pretty broken. Wish I had a nuanced take on it, but I'm just scared and sad. Wow, you're so scared that you're not going to be able to control what people are saying online. Like, we know they don't care about disinformation. Like, that has nothing to do with it. They care about pushing their agenda. They care about power. They don't care that they're hypocrites. They know they're hypocrites, and they're fine with it because that's how they're advancing their agenda. And that's the way that it is. There's so much left-wing disinformation online. It runs freely. It impacted, arguably, past events that may have taken place in the fall of 2020. And they bragged about it and called it fortification. And everybody knows about it. And they're mad they're not going to have the power to do that. But speaking about Trump, because this is the elephant in the room, will Donald Trump return to Twitter? He says he's not going to which is really interesting. Now, he probably can. Elon Musk said he wanted Trump back at Twitter, but Trump has decided that he is not going to be returning. He says he's going to be at Truth Social, and he praised Elon for the move, but he has no plans to return, which honestly, it is what it is. I hope he does eventually come back when he's president. I hope he puts out some banger tweets. I hope that he at least uses his account if he gets it back, assuming he would to like post his press releases because they include his endorsements and the fact that he's off of Twitter does prevent a lot of like the boomer online base from understanding who he's going to endorse. And since his endorsement game has sort of improved, it could obviously help him. In some cases, it might even hold him back too. But it would it definitely, if he's on the platform and he sees what people are saying, it would keep him more in touch with his base anyways. I would want him back at Twitter. But it's his decision at the end of the day. Personally, I think a lot less people are going to be using Truth Social, but maybe he wants to just elevate it as another competitor. I don't know. I have a Truth Social. It's at Red Eagle Patriot on there. Uh, but at the same time, it's like I really use it as a backup more than anything else. Like I mainly just use Twitter. Sometimes we'll use Telegram. And obviously I use Instagram and all those other social medias, which you can follow, by the way. The link is in the description. But that's the way it is. Donald Trump may not come back, but Elon Musk apparently did a good move. And he can come back now. Trump can come back if he wants to, maybe, which is a big move. And hopefully it's a domino effect. Other companies may follow and we're going to have a freer internet as a result. I'm not going to necessarily say that we don't need big tech reform, though, because we absolutely do. I mean, big tech reform still needs to happen. Twitter's just one company, and there's many other problems with big tech other than just uh, censorship, which is arguably the biggest problem. 
but still you have privacy issues and things like that. And Elon has said that he wants to correct that at Twitter too, so hopefully he can get the ball rolling on that. But anyways, guys, thanks for watching this video. Please like this video down below, comment down below, subscribe to the channel, hit the bell for notifications so you never miss another video. Follow me on social media. The links are all in the description down below. And by the merch, the link's in the description too. As always, guys, thanks for watching. Red Eagle, out.